Welcome to Lesson 4 of Chapter 8. We will be talking about angles of elevation and angles of depression in this lesson. And so first of all, we're just going to start out with an example. So let's suppose there's a person on the ground and he's looking up. This person's looking up and sees um, a hang glider. This angle that is formed with the, by the horizontal line from the ground up to the hang glider is called an angle of elevation. Okay, Angles of elevation are always measured above a horizontal line. So what if we have a person in the hang glider looking down at the person on the ground? That angle would be called an angle of depression because it is measured below a horizontal line. Notice we have this horizontal line and the angle goes below that. That defines an angle of depression. If it's going above that horizontal line, it is an angle of elevation. So those are your two primary definitions for this lesson. Here's an example with a hot air balloon and a mountain and a bird up here. You'll see the seagull or something up here. And we're going to go ahead and describe these angles as they relate to the situation. So first of all, let's look at angle one. Angle one right here, you have a bird and you have the horizontal going to the hot air balloon. So angle one is measured from the horizontal below that line. So it's an angle of depression and it's the bird looking down at the person. So a description might be, angle one is the angle of depression from the bird to the person in the hot air balloon. That might be an adequate description. What about angle four? Well, angle four, the horizontal, is the ground level or the base of the mountain, and that might be somebody looking up at the hot air balloon. So that would be an angle of elevation because it's above the horizontal, so angle four is an angle of elevation from the base of the mountain to the person in the hot air balloon. Here's an opportunity for you to try. Go ahead and figure out what angle two and three might be with a description, not just whether they're elevation or angle of depression. Go ahead and describe those. Well, angle two, if you look at angle two, it's a reference from the bird to the person to the top of the mountain, right? So it looks like it's measured from a horizontal going up, so it's an angle of elevation, and that might be from the person in the hot air balloon looking up to the bird. Angle three is measured from that horizontal below, so that looks like it's the person in the hot air balloon looking down to the person at the base of the mountain. That might be an adequate description. How do we use these angles to solve problems? Well, suppose we have a wind farm. Now this picture didn't come through real good in your notes, um, so you might want to draw that in if you need to, to, to be able to see everything. I know this came out kind of dark in some of your uh, copies, so I apologize for that. But suppose we have a person standing here and he's 53 feet away from a wind turbine, okay? And his angle of elevation to the hub, the hub is that thing in the in the very middle of the of of the uh, wind turbine here, and that angle of elevation is 56.5 degrees. Okay, so that's the thing that's in between the blades of, of the wind turbine. So we want to know how tall is the turbine from the ground, all the way to the ground, and it says your eye level is 5.5 feet above the ground. So he's already, we're supposing he's 5.5 feet above the ground, so we're going to have to add that 5.5 feet after we find the length of side x. So keep that in mind. Once we find side x, we're going to have to add that little piece to the ground. So we need to figure out what trig function we're going to use. Well, if we're at this angle and we're looking across, x is the opposite side, 53 feet is the adjacent side, so which trig function uses opposite and adjacent? Well, recall that that is the tangent function, so we say the tangent of the angle is equal to the opposite side, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is 53. Now remember, to get x by itself, we need to multiply both sides by 53. So let me go ahead and put that in here for you to make sure that that's clear. So we're going to multiply by 53 on both sides of the equation. So the next step, you'll be able to see where that comes from. 
So if we solve for x, we get x is equal to 53 times the tangent of 56.5, because these 53's will cancel. And then solving for x, okay, plugging that into your calculator, we get x is approximately equal to 80 point, with this big decimal. I would call it 80.1 to the nearest tenth. Um, but we did not add that 5.5 feet back in. Remember, it says he's 5.5 feet above the ground. So we need to add that back in. So if x is approximately 80, then we need to add that 5.5 feet back in. So we get 85.5 feet tall. Here's one for you to try. Go ahead and pause the video, and I'll show you the solution to this one when we get back. All right, I hope you gave that a try. Let's take a look at what happens in this problem. It says you sight a rock climber on a cliff. So there's a climber up here, and there's this big cliff, and it's a 32 degree angle of elevation, so it's going up from the horizontal. Your eye level is six feet above the ground, so keep that in mind. You're six feet above the ground. I'm gonna highlight this for you real quick. Your eye level is six feet above the ground. So we're gonna have to add that back in, right? Uh, before we finish our problem. And you are a thousand feet from the base of the cliff. So we're a thousand feet here. What's the approximate height of the rock climber from the ground? Well, we need to figure out what sides we're dealing with. So if this is the angle, if this is our reference at eye level, x is the opposite side, a thousand is the adjacent side. So which trig function is that? Well, again, we are dealing with the tangent function. So the tangent of the angle, which is 32 degrees, tangent of 32 degrees, is equal to x opposite over adjacent, which is 1,000. Now how do we get x by itself? What is happening to x? It's being divided by 1,000, and the opposite of that is to multiply by 1,000, so that those will cancel. And so whatever we do on one side, remember we have to do the same thing on the other side. These now cancel, and we end up with 1,000 times the tangent of 32 is equal to x. So now it's a calculator problem. Punch this into your calculator. 1,000 times the tangent of 32, and you end up with, I believe it's 62.5 to the nearest tenth. And let me double check here. I think I punched a number in wrong. I think I had 100. I did. So let me try that one more time. I think I'm off by a factor of 10. So hang on just a second here. Yeah, it should be 624. I get 624.8. So let me go back here. Just going to erase that. And we'll redo this. So I have 624.9 to the nearest tenth. 624.9 feet, I believe, we're working in for units. Okay, so that's a thousand times the tangent of 32. It gives us 624.9, but remember our eye level is six feet above the ground. Okay, so we want to know what that height is. We're already six feet above the ground, and the height of the rock climber from the ground then, we need to add six. So let me put this in a different color. We're going to go plus six feet from the ground. So this rock climber then is really uh, what does that work out to be? Here's a 0.9, this is a 0, and a 3. Looks like 630.9 feet from the ground. Using the angle of depression, it says an approach to runway 17 on an airport um, in Oklahoma. Uh, the pilot has to go ahead and begin a 3 degree angle of descent here. So this angle up here from the pilot uh, in the airplane measured to a horizontal is three degrees. Okay, and it says starting from a height of 2,714 feet above sea level. But the airport is at 1,007 feet above sea level. So that difference, 2,714 and 1,007, will give us the height that he actually has to descend. So when you subtract those, you get 1,707 feet. And this angle of uh, depression is the same as the angle of elevation over here and that's because remember if these two um, horizontal lines are parallel and the, that forms alternate interior angles right so that will always be the case we have alternate interiors so that is your three degrees 
And we want to know to the nearest tenth of a mile. Now keep in mind here, we're measuring in feet, and all of a sudden they say to the nearest tenth of a mile. So we're going to have to do some conversions to miles here. I'll show you how to do that. How far from the runway is the airplane at the start of his approach? So we want to know what is the hypotenuse right here? How far is he from the airport? And that's labeled as side X. Okay, so first of all, we need to figure out if this is our reference, what sides do we have? What, are we, what sides are involved? This 1707 is opposite. And then we're looking at the hypotenuse. So what trig function uses opposite and hypotenuse? Well, that is the sine function. So we say the sine of the angle, which is 3 degrees, equals the opposite side of 1707 times the hypotenuse, which is x. Now, there's a whole bunch of steps missing in here. We've talked about this multiple times in class. Remember, we have to multiply both sides by x to get x out of the denominator there. So x will cancel. And we have x sine of 3 is equal to 1707. But how do we get x by itself now? Well, we need to divide by the sine of 3 because x is being multiplied by the sine of 3. We're going to divide by the sine of 3 degrees equals uh, 1707 divided by the sine of 3 degrees. This is getting a little messy. Sorry about this. So now these cancel, and I am left with. I just wanted to show you those steps in between in case you get confused by that. We get x is equal to 1707 divided by the sine of 3, which you put in on your calculator gives you this big number. Okay, now that is in feet. In order to convert feet to miles, we need to divide by 5,280. That's how many feet there are in a mile. So when we do that, taking this number divided by 5,280, we get 6.2 miles from the runway. Here is your lesson check. Go ahead and work on these and bring these to class. Remember, we will, we will talk about these in class tomorrow. The one thing I do want to mention um, about these angles, writing a description. Uh, for instance, number one, when you write your description of number one, this angle, um, just describe it as from C to A. You don't have to come up with a scenario, but I want more than just angle of depression or angle of elevation. Write a description of what letters are involved um, in that diagram. See you next time.